This is The Late Report. Well, a study shows that the value of Northwest stocks has risen $150 billion in the last two and a half years. That's the equivalent of approximately $27,000 for every Washington State resident. Or $150 billion for one resident. <laughs> University of Washington Nobel laureate Hans Demelt has theorized that a particle exists that is actually smaller than a quark, up until now considered to be the smallest thing in the universe. He calls the particle Senator Patty Murray. <laughs> Former Governor Booth Gardner has been named to the new, com uh, the new commissioner of the National Soccer Alliance, a women's professional league. Former Oregon Senator Bob Packwood was also considering the job <laughs> until he found out that in soccer you can't use your hands. <laughs> The state legislature is considering dropping a requirement that the state buy artwork to decorate new prisons. Instead, the legislature is proposing a new plan to simply imprison more artists. <laughs> Kid Star Radio for Kids is suspending operations because of a lack of money. An independent audit shows that the station spent all of its money on candy. <laughs> Two elderly women who chased away four intruders from their mobile home in Grant County by pointing guns over their heads and shooting into the sky were honored in a special ceremony this week. In other news, 17 Canada geese were discovered dead near a mobile home park <laughs> in Grant County. Leon Lederman, Nobel Prize winning physicist and director of Chicago's prestigious Fermi Laboratory, was ticketed for jaywalking last week in Seattle. Seattle police explained that if you let one Nobel Prize winner jaywalk, then they, all of the Nobel Prize winners are going to want to jaywalk. <laughs> Seattle Sonic coach George Carl says he can picture himself retiring at this time next year. Carl said he can also picture himself eating a big jelly donut. <laughs> well, the movie Star Wars, directed by George Lucas, is now the biggest grossing film in history. And here with a review is Joel McHale. Joel? Thank you very much. <laughs> well... I'd sure like to know why this is the biggest grossing movie, because I saw it yesterday for the first time and found it to be hugely disappointing. First, let's start with the actors. Harrison Ford, wonderful talent, has had a very distinguished career, films like Witness, Blade Runner, The Fugitive, uh, all those Indiana Jones movies. So why would he suddenly now decide to take a bit part? I mean, it makes no sense. I mean, although I will admit he looks like he's lost a little weight for the film, and uh, the makeup job makes him look about 20 years younger. But still, what was he thinking? And Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia? As near as I can tell, Carrie Fisher is just in the movie so Cinnabon could get some product placement, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and Darth Vader. Gee, I wonder who that could be behind the mask. Come on, James Earl Jones doesn't even try to disguise his voice at all. We're, still, we're supposed to believe the nice old guy from Field of Dreams is now a, is now a bad guy? I mean, that, that's ridiculous. It doesn't work for me at all. That voice will always be etched in my mind as the kind, kind Lion King Mufasa. <laughs> if the movie does have a bright spot, it's newcomer Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. <laughs> he is totally believable in his part. Prediction. Look for big things from this young town. Okay, Joel, thank, thank you very much, Joel. That, By the way, right. how come no love scenes between Luke, Luke and Princess Leia? They obviously dig each other very much. I mean, why didn't Lucas develop that angle? And how about Chewbacca? There's an original character, provided you never saw Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> and what's a Wookiee? I'll tell you what a Wookiee is. It's a direct steal from that TV show, Alf. All right, we've got to wrap this up, Joel, okay? And I kept waiting for Yoda's finger to light up, but it never did. All right, yeah, Joel, come on. We've got to wrap it up. Okay, just my opinion. Well, thanks very much for your concise review, Joel. Sure, and by the way, next week I'll be reviewing a new CD that came out uh, a while ago from a band called The Beatles, yet another one of those British sound-alike bands cashing in on the, on the success of Oasis. Okay, well, we'll look forward to that, Joel. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Joel McHale. Finally, the Fifth Avenue Theater has hired non-union musicians this week to replace striking musicians so that the musical Beauty and the Beast could go on. Labor woes continued for the theater last night when musician picketers were joined by union members of the American Federation of Beasts.
This has been the Late Report. Stay with us because we're coming right back.